All right, guys, we're back for part two of the Perfect Pass carbon chassis build with his new chassis. Um, we'll uh, kind of go back over what we've already done a little bit and continue on from there. Um, did want to think of a couple people, you know, David at Scorch is always helping, Michael at Onyx, Thomas at BSR, of course, Ben at Delta Plastics, obviously, Roz at Perfect Pass. And uh, there's a lot of others. I did uh, did want to show that a little bit. My daughter is doing a kid-friendly, kids-only RC uh, channel. She's been wanting to do it. She's uh, uh, going to do some unboxing stuff, some bashing stuff, some... I hope some speed runs too with some of her cars because she really gets into coming with me and have, for having fun. It's going to be a kid-friendly channel, and uh, I'll let y'all know y'all so you can hook your kids up with watching it with her. But let me get this set up for our, our carbon chassis car, and we'll start talking about talking about it and continue on with this build. All right, guys. Got the camera set up where we can look at some of this and talk about it. Um... Last time when we got this chassis out, we showed <clears throat> I showed you the chassis, showed everything about it. Um, went ahead and got the front and rear end on here. Talked a little bit about how I set my shocks up. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more and again in a minute. Um, I went ahead and uh, just threw a set of tires on here so we can kind of have this thing sitting. Um, the arrow plates, got one of them on there. I wanted to be able to show those. These things fit really nice. I was um, actually surprised at how well they fit. They fit right to the chassis. It's nice and smooth transition. Um, did a real good job with those. And I throw it in the floor. Um, also, I run this little piece that David makes at Scorched. Fits right in this notch here. I've had these things on some cars to where they're worn down so far that um, you can't even see what screws is in them. That's the lowest part on this car with this front piece factory, you know, with let's say factory Arma. Um, so it's a kind of a nice piece to keep some stuff from dragging on other areas and it works really good. It shoots a few sparks too, being that it's made out of titanium. Um, we'll get the other air plate on shortly. Um, I also mounted the servo, um, I mounted it this way in order to keep the arms nice and parallel. Uh, maybe normally I would probably maybe put it over a little tighter, but we're running a single motor car, as you can see from the PPS mount. And so I got plenty of room to kind of move things and make them nice and, and uh, neat. Don't have to pack them in so tight and, and make it more difficult. So we got this mounted. The uh, screw's not in it yet because we hadn't powered it up and let it get centered. Also put the perfect pass center brace on. And I made a a small plate use some uh, 3m two-sided tape with a little adhesion promoter that 3m makes to mount it here i left this servo or this receiver here so you can see you can just mount it up here make it big enough to where you, if you are running a perfect pass launch controller you can mount it as well so you got plenty of room and this thing's it's on there pretty strong it's not going anywhere so it's more than enough to hold that. Plus it gets that out of there. And I don't like running uh, receiver boxes. We're not running into dirt or the mud or water or anything anyway. So it doesn't really matter. And it makes it really nice and easy to unplug it and do your logging. So that's just the kind of way I like to do it. Um, we talked about this last time. But I wanted to kind of uh, reiterate that I like to set my right height up at the end. When I've got everything else done, you know, got my body figured out how I want to do it. Um, got all the electronics in, set a couple of batteries in. These springs are pretty stout, but you know, when you put all that stuff in there, it's going to push it down a little bit. So I like to set my ride hop at the end. And with that said, you know, I mentioned in the last video, I do not use droop screws to set ride height. I, I just don't think that's the best way to go. Uh, you end up with a bunch of bowed up arms. You got so much tension out here 
and that little bitty screw that's threaded through a thin piece of plastic just doesn't do it um we talked about it last time but i just wanted to kind of touch base with it one more time you know i uh to lower the front of the car we get this apart here if i can get it to come apart i uh run small nylon bushings that's going to drop the car some cars you may run two depending on the distance between here and the front of the car you know if you're running a limitless it's a little bit longer so the more distance out past that front the lower the car is going to get as it goes forward because it'll rake in the car so if it's like if you got a lot of distance out in front of those front wheels then with the back end being raked it's just going to continue to go down so you kind of need to figure out what you're going to run how you're going to set it up and then make your final adjustments on your ride height the shocks on here came off that you know this whole car was that the v2 that i did uh the build video with earlier uh this season um if you didn't see that go back and check it out because i really go into more depth on the shocks um we'll set up the ride height at the end when everything else is done um that'll be something i do uh at the very end um and uh you know we'll just kind of go from there um did want to show you you know i've got the perfect pass springs on the front already did that off camera this is the rear this is you know my left hand is my weak hand um those springs are these are stout these things are really stout so i think it's going to help control some of that squat in the back of these cars um with a single motor car uh, i think the spring is more than enough you wouldn't even have to run a bump stop on it um but we're gonna put the last spring on and when i say bump stop i did want to kind of tell you what that is i run a piece of tubing on the outside of my shock shaft and it'll uh depending on how long you cut it on the front you might use it as a bump stop if you have uh, a problem with the car diving too much on braking i don't think it's going to be any problem at all on this car so we're not really going to worry about it much these shocks already have some bump stops on them because i ran them on that other car already and we're just kind of switching everything off of a stock v2 uh limitless putting it on here i did switch the shaft the center shafts to v1 and move it um it's just where i like to run my stuff at so that's what we got there these uh shocks on the rear they're kind of good because they're so long that you can actually loosen them up no matter what springs you have on them and take all the tension off which is kind of nice because it makes it easier to put springs on in this situation you know when you're doing this on camera and i do not edit i think everybody's starting to uh see that i would uh i'd rather just do it um as i go along and just stop the camera when i need to reset something um i don't have time to do a lot of editing it's called working six and seven days a week and uh i still want to share some of my knowledge so that's what we do it's an easy way just to check see if you got it the same just as a good starting point you can adjust it from there all right so now we got all the the springs and shocks on um we'll, we'll put that back on the car here in just a minute um had a probably the next thing is you know we already got the front on but put the back back on and then um decide you know what body we're going to run as far as de uh, determining what body mounts we're going to use um on this particular car i'm going to run an fc body uh so we'll use the perfect pass mount obviously with the way it's made we can run the body mounts way out so it'll help keep that car from sagging i'm actually going to run a three millimeter thick body that that bend a sense so it's pretty stiff anyway um but that's what we're going to do hadn't really decided in the front 
um, Rosmex is really not uh, front mount this wide as well uh, but a lot of my cars I run a single front I'll make a determination with that and show you what I do there um, and uh, we'll continue on and I'll show you about where I want to put the electronics and how I want to set it up so let me get a couple things set up and we'll be right back all right guys went ahead and got the back on here obviously got the mount back on um i just stuck these out here these are pretty neat um you one little screw take a pin out and you can put them anywhere you want obviously on the fc 100 body it's wide and flat at the back so we'll run them all the way out to the outsides keep that body from sagging um again this was off of limitless so it still has the the wing mount um i do have a perfect pass uh bat wing special edition wing um have never ran one so we'll make some decisions on that probably i probably will run it one time just to see how it does um and then uh other than that what i went ahead and done is i went ahead and got the other arrow plate in along with the bottom obviously the back uh diffuser so the bottom of the car is basically done um looks really nice Got it all in. It, 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 everything looks great. These things fit nice. It looks good. So, we talked about the upper brace. Like I say, I usually run mine like this, and that way I don't have... It's in the wide open antennas. I usually just run them out a hole in the top of the body. I know a lot of guys run straws, um, antenna tubes. That works great. Um... But I've found that with my range extender, as long as these antenna are outside of the body, I can uh, I can send the car 2,000 foot down the road, which is past what I can hardly see. And then still, if I can see it, I can bring it back. Um, so I just don't see the need to, to fight with the antenna tube because they're always in the way for me. That's just my personal opinion. And it works for me, so I know it works. Um had a few guys chime in about what motor to run so i think what i'm going to do because i do want to do it as a single motor car um i think that's where the real challenge is going to be this year um is seeing how far we can push a single motor car um i know how far i have but i know in the past i haven't pulled a body off a lot of cars um a lot of different reasons why but in any case so i know about what i can do with a single motor car and i want to uh push one and show everybody what it'll do um so i think the first motor that we're going to try is one that everybody's interested in now is a tp4080 this particular one is a 2022 um i've had some some good luck with the 4080s they're pretty good motors got plenty of power um and uh so I think we can do something really nice with it. Um, I've seen some really nice numbers with them, with a lot of people too. So we're going to run that. Um, just kind of setting it on here while I'm talking as well. And uh, I think that'll be a fun motor to start with. Uh, we'll see how it does, how far it goes, and then uh, kind of go from there. Um maybe do a fifth scale motor at some point as well uh and we'll uh we'll be showing this one all year long and uh so everybody knows it's a good single motor car i'm just trying to get those started while i'm talking and i hope i don't get long-winded guys i'm just uh you know i say i work 10 12 hours a day seven days a week most of the time so just trying to get all this done and share some knowledge and have some fun all right it's pretty easy with the motor um there's two ways of doing it you know it, it really as far as the setup goes as far as what you want to put where is entirely up to you um some people have better luck with their electronics and their motor in the front some people have better luck with the motor and electronics in the rear um People run batteries in the front, people obviously, because this is set up this way, run batteries to the outside. 
uh, up and down through the car you can fit two uh, onyx 8000s batteries this way <clears throat> so there's plenty of room to squeeze those batteries in you can put a lot of batteries in the car um, obviously we're just going to run two batteries one motor and see what we can do with it um, I've kind of mocked some of this up and took it back apart so it makes it a little easier to go through the sp uh, spur gear in this car right now is a 34 um, it's a 2000 kV motor basically probably uh, I imagine if you kV tested it, it's probably around 1950 to 1980 maybe somewhere around in there um, so we'll probably start it with 34 34 you know it's a one-to-one -one gear it's a gear that everybody thinks is the magic gear anyway um i'm sure that it's going to end up with two or three teeth uh over geared on the motor we'll see how it goes um obviously i have to make a decision on which way i want to mount that one to get it out of my way um Roz did send me a perfect pass launch controller too and this is a perfect pass car so i may put it in here and see how it does um i helped him test them way back when when he first uh started developing them um i just uh i've got a good trigger pull and i like my trigger pull so i haven't really uh haven't fooled with one haven't ran one but uh we'll see we'll, we'll just wait and see um everybody will know because everything's going to be out in the open on this car the whole time um the next thing obviously is determining where you're going to put your esc being that it's a single motor car, we're wide open. It's going to be easy to figure out. Um, and everybody knows we're going to run a Castle XLX2. There is no other ESC to run right now. Um, there's nothing out there that even compares to these. I'm going to mount it on this chassis, obviously. I'm just going to use 3M two-sided. Um, it's more than ample and plenty strong enough when you mount this to that flat chassis with this much stick surface on the ESC and then the, this ain't coming out of the car. In the past, we've had a lot of problems with batteries coming out and jerking these wires out because these QS8 connectors are pretty strong. So if you eject the batteries, you're going to tear the wires out of your ESC. And I have a stack of them that way. And I change what battery straps I run and I've pretty much completely eliminated that as a problem but anyway the xlx2 the best place obviously is just going to be to mount it on the other side it's going to split the weight up we can run the batteries you know anywhere we want to on the sides of the car um obviously running the perfect pass uh v2 qs8 i do run them on this like you know you can run them a lot of guys run bullets whatever I like to run more uh, wire on the ESC so that you can cut the battery wire down. Because when you're cutting the battery wire down, you're cutting two sets, of two negatives and two positives down. If I just shorten this up, then I have a short wire here, but then I got to make my battery wires longer. So I've got four wires that are long. If you leave the two wires on the ESC, then you have two wires long and all the four wires are shorter so you end up with more uh, or less battery length of wire leaving the esc just a little longer which is a stock length that's the way they came that's why i usually run all of mine um and then i'll just cut my battery wires down once i decide where i want to run them i'll shorten the battery wires up to where this goes to just the batteries so if i run the battery here I can run a wire that's really about half the length of what comes on the batteries usually. So we'll two-sided tape this ESC over here. And then um, it's going to be real simple. Uh, I'll stick this down real quick. And then I'll show you a couple more things. All right, guys. I got that ESC stuck down. And if you wonder why I stopped the video to do just that is... I hate things being crooked i don't like things out of place or anything so i didn't want to slap that thing in there and have it in crooked and then have to peel all that mess out um anyway it's just one of those things i went ahead and stuck the receiver as well i did put it this way just so we have this additional space we can use it for the gps or if i decide to run a perfect pass in it we'll put that there um i also made 
some short servo, I mean servo, some short motor wires um, so that we don't have a whole bunch of wire. I like to make them as short as possible. Um, I left them a little bit longer than absolutely necessary just to uh, just to make sure that I can make the turn. You don't want them under pressure. Um, if you're running this thing and these things are under any kind of pressure to pull up, um, they're going to pop out of there. Um, and if they pop out, then they're going to arc on the bullet and then you're going to have a big messed up ESC that is basically useless and it's uh, uh, it's just not worth it. So I try to keep them where I have enough that they're not under tension so they're not pulling. Um, actually, when I'm sitting under this brace like this, the uh and having this curl it'll actually help push them in and keep them in there um something else that i do you know i don't like a lot of extra wires and for me to sit and repin these little wires is just absolutely monotonous it drives me crazy so what i have found is you can get there's several companies. I get them off of uh, Amazon. Servo extension wires. They're male-to-male -male wires. Um, they come in different lengths. So you have whatever length you might need. And what I do is I take the plug from the ESC and I lift the locks up and pull the factory wire out. Just pull the pins out, because look at this wire. I mean, it's great if you're gonna mount something that far away, but what are you gonna do with all this mess when you have to wad it up, zip tie it, or try to find a place to put it? It's really just terrible. And I don't feel like sitting there and cutting it and putting those ends on. I can do that, but as many cards as I have, I go crazy trying to get those little pins, you know? Uh, so what I when I found these, and I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but there's the little lock pins. You can take a razor edge and lift that lock pin up. In fact, when you put a little tension on the wire, you just lift a little lock pin right here. Each one of these little lock pins, they're not really pins, it's just a tab, but you lift them up and, uh, And you can pull these wires straight out so now you got this plug that you don't need anymore and then you got this wire that's way shorter and like I say you can buy them in different lengths and it has the pins that you need to take the factory wire out of the ESC and put this in in this case this one is uh, I put this one in here um, it's probably a little bit longer than I needed but I wanted to uh, decide how I wanted to route it and if I need to change it to a little shorter one um, then that's what I'll do but it cuts down on the wire to where you're only running see if that was that wire that's how it would be and you tuck it and put it wherever you want it super clean super easy you can buy these things for like 20 in a pack for like nine dollars so they're like 50 cents a piece um, it's worth 50 cents all day long for me to do that than it is to sit here and try to crimp those little ass wires on. Those things are terrible. They drive me nuts. Anyway, um, and I can keep the, keep my car nice and clean. The way this is here, you know, obviously I'll have just a little bit of wire, so I'll probably run the other one that's a little shorter, but I'll run it and it'll be just right to the ESC. Make sure I got it tucked to where my battery wires, when I'm doing them, aren't going to pull on it. And then I got a nice clean car, servo wire, run it up, run it on underneath the brace and let it jump over. So it'll stay, once I put the last tie on, it'll be just like that. Keeps everything nice and clean. That way when I open my car up, the only wires that I've got anywhere is just the battery wires and the power wires for the ESC. Um, and you don't have all the other stuff in your way. Yeah, it's nice and nice and clean. Um, I guess the next thing is, uh, we thought, I thought about it just a little bit in the first video. Um, I had a lot of people asking me if I was going to use the slots for running the battery wires. 
I mean running the battery straps because of them being underneath the car. I really don't see a problem with such a small strap being under the car. I don't think it's going to cause any problems at all. Um, so I'll put one in and, and show you what I mean. And I'll tell you a little bit about this strap as well. Let's see if you can see that. I moved the car. That is like nothing under there. It's really just not going to do anything. I don't think it's going to affect the aerodynamics of this car whatsoever. Um, and running them through the carbon, even though the edges are nice and smooth, I found that the factory straps are really, they're, they're good for some things, but not what we're doing. These are Kevlar. They are seriously strong. Um, I've actually connected one of these and picked one of my sons up when he's holding me on the other side of it and he's probably a hundred pounds those things are seriously strong and i have not ejected batteries since i went to all kevlar straps on everything and if the batteries don't go away if they don't go out in a crash then they don't get stuck on this plug and they don't rip the wire out of the esc so not only are you saving your batteries by keeping them in the car you're saving your esc and we all know the ESCs and batteries are probably one of the most expensive parts of the whole car. Um, so it's a good idea to get all that stuff to where it stays in there and let the car tumble around if it has, you know, if it happens and uh, save those, those things that cost the most. They also come in longer versions. They have, some of them have rubber on them to uh, keep from slipping. Um, I think I got all of these from like drone manufacturers, uh, you know, drone parts guys. I don't know why that that's, they, I guess they use them more on that than, than we, what, what we do. But, uh, the other thing, you know, all this stuff, that's two sided. Obviously that's bolted in and then, uh, down this underneath of all the batteries, I, uh, I always Velcro my batteries too. Um, some people use dual lock. I don't particularly care for dual lock. I just use an industrial grade uh, regular Velcro. Um, it sticks. It's not coming off. And the, the thing that I like about it, and I'm just kind of rambling a bit, but the thing I like about it is once you stick that battery on there, this thing has some give. And it's just like crazy strong. So you got those Kevlar straps. Your battery can't slip out of the end because it can't you can't pull all that especially when you got it probably three inches four inches on the bottom of a battery it's not going to slip either way i usually stick the hook end of it all the way down the center or all the way down my battery area and that way i can move my battery wherever i want to and all my batteries have this on the bottoms so you can uh there's ways to keep the batteries in the cars and i think that's really the best way to go with it um i guess the next thing out of all this and i'm trying not to ramble a whole lot um this is really the build and i kind of wanted to say that because this is all arma diffs are arma we did 500k in the front two to three hundred in the rear Still got the arms. We changed the springs, which is just setup stuff. It doesn't matter what you do or what kind of car you got. You're going to do setup. And so that's really what we've done. And we've changed a, a, a body mount to run a different body. When you look at the things that we took off from the stock, you know, we got a couple of diff braces that, you know, I've took them off of many, many, many cars before anyway. I don't, I don't like them. They get in the way. You don't have to change the shock towers you don't have to change the Ackerman arms you don't have to change the steering stub outs you don't have to change the top plate obviously you will have to change these because they wobble and you don't want them in there and you don't you don't have to change these bushings so this with this uh new drive shaft that that's gonna go so that's got so you could run this car with 
the carbon chassis and everything except for those pieces in the motor mountain spool so it's really not as complicated as it's made out to be sometime you know we like to change we like to put carbon shock towers in because they look good they're neat you know top plates ackerman arms steering arms all that stuff looks really cool but it's not a absolute necessary thing to run fast and my fastest cars are more stock parts than you might think i like to build nice cars uh david would scorch you know we got the scorched out build it's all scorched everything i have some really cool stuff coming um i'll probably share um within a day or two a new build that i have coming i kind of planned on just kind of not showing it until i run it but i'm really excited about it and i maybe want to get some other people excited about it too because it's going to be crazy um but anyway we're getting off topic i ramble and i don't edit so i guess you have to listen if you want to hear it all um so we got the the wire we'll get it set up when we uh I'll change out that one wire, make it a little bit shorter. So if you got this wire, that wire, the battery wires, that's as clean as it gets as far as I'm concerned. Obviously we're gonna run this. The front, you know, we have the front um, body mount. Like I was saying earlier, I run a single on the mo most of my bodies and I like to keep everything the same so that I can just swap it out. You know, I could run two or three different bodies with the same car. I can, you know, if I want to run a WR body on a car that runs an FC body, I can switch all that over. And what I do to get that single mount, this is the front on an infraction. And now it's got a single mount. Normally there's a screw that goes all the way through and threads in to this brace. But what I do is I slightly enlarge this hole to fight. It's a five sixteenths drill bit, eight millimeter, whichever you have. And it'll go in there, you drill it out nice and clean. Um, usually use some CA glue, push that in. And then I'll go back on this side and do a small hole up into the post and put a screw here. So this post ain't going anywhere. And then when you mount it up, it's got four screws here that hold it down. And now I've got three posts. And the way you get away with it is you run in your splitter to hold the front of the body. It works good. I run it on a lot of cars. I like it. Um, it's just cleaner for me. Um, everybody's got their own way. But I did want to share it out how I do that. It's really simple. Um, it makes it nice. You get that. Uh, I don't have one drilled really right here. But um, it makes it just where you got two and one, three pins car sets good when i put a body on if you look in most of my videos you can see in fact the last video i had nothing but white gorilla tape so you can really see it but i'll tape the sides down to keep it from flapping and i'll usually throw a piece of tape over the front just to kind of snug the body down to the splitter um and uh it works really good so what we have now after all that rambling is we got a perfect pass carbon build. Just the parts that they that they make. Carbon chassis, top brace. We do have an Ackerman arm and the top plate. Um, steering stub outs or the steering stubs or the steering plates, whatever you want to call those. Perfect pass rear body mount, which I really like. It's really wide. It's gonna support that body. I did use a different process to do that, but I think I like this way better. And uh of course, I made the little plate to put my ESC or my receiver on. I'm going to run a, a TP4080 2022 to start with. I'm going to start it at 3034. Um, and while I'm talking about gearing, I run a car with a moderate gear to start with to see what it'll do. And then you can go from there. It does. I mean, it, it's a two minute deal to change a, a, a pinion out and move it up from there and see where it goes. Um, I don't use a gearing calculator and just 
figured out what'll go 190 miles an hour. I just start out with something that works and work my way up. It's a whole lot more fun for me. I don't want to build a car and just throw it in the road and try to do 200. I want to put it in the road and run 180, check my logs, enjoy my time running my cars and continue on from there. It's a process. I do that with every single car. You know, all my dual motor cars that I have, in fact, every car that I almost have has always been run on 4S to start with. You know, make a 4S pass. And I can tell you from my 4S pass what my 8S pass is going to be. What the, the mile per hour is 8S gearing. So I know what that will translate when I run it on uh, 4S and 8S. So it's just, it's just, like I say, it's a process and it's fun for me. And uh, that's the way I'm going to continue to always do my cars. Because I do this as a hobby. It's a lot of fun. But now that we got this car together, we know that we're going to put batteries in it, get the body on. Um, what I'm going to do, I think, because it's going to be, I don't want to do a part three and then go to the, to the runway. Um, I think I've went over most everything that I can think of with this car. If there's anything that anybody wants to know, uh, I'm always happy to help somebody out. But I think what I'm going to do is the last little bit of stuff. You know, we've there's plenty of videos out there about how to set up your ESC, you know, cutting off your your voltage. Um and you know, if you depending on what motor, obviously, you know, about setting your timing and you want to, you know, your log and all that type of thing and uh so you want to get that set up um you know, calibrate your ESC to your controller. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll take this thing to the track. It'll go on the next trip up, which is maybe a week, two weeks, depending on the weather. Two weeks max, I hope. And uh, we will go over it before I run it. Anything that I've changed or done, you'll see it then. We'll see what we got going on. And we'll run the car. And we'll see where it goes. Um, I think we can do pretty good with this little motor. The next motor. Um, I got one laying here that I've used for a long time. Big fit scale motor. 58. It's 5860. Um, maybe we'll put a motor mount on it after the next trip or so and run it on there as well. And just keep this a single motor car and see just how fast we can make a single motor car go. I think that's the plan for the year. Um, got plenty of other cars to do other things with. So we'll do that. I do want to, while I'm still rambling, I do want to tell, uh, shout out to Roz for sending out some stuff for me to test this out and uh, to show it off and to build this car. Um, we're going to get out and have some fun with this thing. And, uh, you know, and share it with everybody. And then obviously, you know, all the other people that, that help out all the time. Uh, there's a lot of good, good companies in this, in this hobby. And, uh, I'm always shouting out to all of them and everybody knows who they are, but they, uh, they do a lot for us and they make parts and we have fun with it. So let's keep it a hobby and have fun. Um, I think that's about all I know to talk about on this thing. When we go to the the runway, I will show you my ride height on the pavement. It's not going to do any good to look right here. Obviously, I got stuff laying all over this table. We'll get the ride height. We'll show it on the on the runway. That runway, I can run cars just a little bit lower than I would on my normal road, and that's the one thing that I do like to do is. I want to run my car as low as I can run it for the road I'm running on. There are roads that I have to run my car a little bit taller. There are roads that have some humps in them that require you to run your car a little bit taller. Um, if you have a super smooth surface, I run my car as low as I absolutely can. Um, it works for me. It works good. Um, I think we've covered everything. Again, if anybody needs to know anything, give me a shout. If you're not subscribed, you probably would want to. 
uh, I've got a super cool build I'm fixing to show off and I'm not going to post it everywhere. I'm just going to post it on my channel. Um, I actually have a few nice builds coming that are not, um, not normal builds, let's say. Um, definitely something different. Uh, I've been working on a couple of them for a long time and they're finally getting to the point of being able to be finished up. So we'll be running one of those really soon and another one probably in the fall. Um, so y'all subscribe so you can see those, those cars as soon as I uh, post the videos. I appreciate you watching. Again, thanks Roz. I hope I hadn't talked too much. Uh, let's, let's take this thing out and have some fun. I'll see you at the runway on the next trip with the Perfect Pass carbon chassis full build. Thanks guys for watching and we'll talk to you again soon.